Hi there. In this video, we'll just answer the last part of the question we didn't have time for in video number one. So remember, this is a, a, a transistor switching circuit and there was a slight problem, of course, in that it was talking about how street lights can be switched on automatically in the dark. And over here, I had placed a heater. I forgot to change that in the diagram. So I've now replaced this with the street light, as you can see now. And I was talking about how this circuit would work in that as it becomes darker, the resistance of this LDR would increase, causing therefore the voltage across the LDR to increase. When the voltage across this LDR increases above a certain value, this MOSFET would conduct. We then have a current in this relay coil. And when we have a current in the relay coil, then what's going to happen is of course the relay switch as you can see there's closing and that causes the street light to light. So that's the operation of the, the circuit itself. Remember if, as I said last time the voltage across this bottom component and in this case it's the LDR that's also the voltage between two points in the MOSFET this point here which is the gate and this point here, which is the source. And it's always the voltage in a MOSFET, at least between the gate and the source. If that increases above a certain value, then this MOSFET is going to conduct. And in this case, we then have a current in the relay coil, which as we said, closed that relay switch. If this was an LED, the LED would light. A motor, of course, would then start turning. A buzzer would buzz, and so on and so forth. Now, the last part of this question is asking, what's the purpose of the variable resistor? Now, let's say at a certain light level, so the brightness is at a certain level so that the voltage across this LDR is just slightly too low for the MOSFET to conduct. Now, what that would mean is if I made it slightly darker, so if the light level decreased just slightly, then the resistance of the LDR would increase and the voltage across the LDR would increase just enough for that MOSFET to conduct. So at the moment, it's just below, the voltage across the LDR is just below that value. Let's imagine at that point then, without changing the brightness level, and what we should do is, of course, we should then open up. There we go. That's what we should be showing. We should be showing this relay switch open at that point because, of course, this MOSFET is not conducting. So as we said, this voltage across the LDR is just low enough so that the MOSFET is just off, just not conducting at this point. We increase the voltage across the variable resistor. Now, how we do that is we increase the resistance of the variable resistor. So if we increase the resistance of the variable resistor that means the voltage across the variable resistor increases. And of course, that then means that the voltage across the LDR decreases. Now remember before, if we made it slightly darker, the voltage across the LDR would increase slightly, just enough for the MOSFET to conduct. If we've increased this resistance of the variable resistor, and therefore increased the voltage across it, then that means the voltage across the LDR is decreasing. So we'll need to then make it even darker than we did before in order to increase the voltage across the LDR to a point where the voltage across the bottom component of the LDR is large enough to make the MOSFET conduct. So by increasing the resistance of this variable resistor and therefore the voltage across it what that's meant is this LDR needs to be in even darker conditions for the MOSFET to conduct. So in this case, what's happened is or how this variable resistor is operating. The variable resistor is basically setting the brightness level of which the MOSFET conducts and therefore the street lights turn on. Imagine instead of an LDR in this position, if I was to change this LDR for, say, a thermistor, then the variable resistor 
it would be setting the temperature at which the MOSFET then conducts. Okay, so that answers the last part of the question. Remember again, on the website you can download the PDF document which has all the questions within the, uh, any of the lessons. So this was relating to the last question in lesson number one. And as I said, you go to the website and you can download that PDF if you want to. Obviously, just take the lesson rather than the full 45 minutes. You can do it in small bite-sized chunks. So again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you later.